On June 14, 1989, due to some misinformation about the Church, the government of Ghana banned all activities of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints within that African country. The government seized all Church property and all missionary activity stopped. The members of the Church, who refer to this period as the Freeze, did their best to keep to live the gospel without branch meetings or the support of missionaries. There are many inspiring stories about how the members kept the light of the gospel shining by worshiping in their homes and looking after each other as home and visiting teachers. Eventually, the misunderstanding was resolved, and on November 29, 1990, the freeze ended and normal Church activities resumed. Since then, there have been excellent relationships between the Church and the government of Ghana. Members who lived through the freeze are quick to point out the blessings that came from that unusual period. The faith of many was strengthened through the adversity that they faced. But one blessing of the freeze came in an unusual way. Nicholas Ofosu Hene was a young policeman assigned to guard an LDS meeting house during the freeze. His duty was to watch over the building at night. When Nicholas first arrived at the meeting house, he saw that things had been scattered around with papers, books, and furniture in disarray. In the midst of the disorder, he saw a copy of the Book of Mormon. He tried ignoring the book because he had been told it was evil, but he felt strangely attracted to it. Finally, Nicholas could ignore the book no longer. He picked it up. He felt impelled to start reading it. He read through the night, tears running down his cheeks as he read. The first time he picked it up, he read all of First Nephi. The second time, he read all of Second Nephi. When he got to Second Nephi chapter 25, he read the following. And we talk of Christ, we rejoice in Christ, we preach of Christ, we prophesy of Christ, and we write according to our prophecies that our children may know to what source they may look for a remission of their sins. At that point, Nicholas felt the Spirit so strongly that he started sobbing. He realized that in the course of his reading, he had received several spiritual promptings, that this book was Scripture, the most correct he had ever read. He realized that the Latter-day Saints, contrary to what he had heard, strongly believe in Jesus Christ. After the freeze ended and missionaries returned to Ghana, Nicholas, his wife, and his children joined the Church. When I saw him last year, he was a police commander and was serving as the president of the Tamale Ghana district of the Church. He says, The Church has transformed my life. I thank the Almighty God for leaving me into this gospel. Alibert Davies, another Ghanaian, accompanied a friend to one of our meeting houses where the friend had a presidency meeting. While he waited for his friend, Alibert read a book he found nearby. When the meeting ended, Alibert wanted to take the book home. He was given permission not only to take that book, but also a copy of the Book of Mormon. When he got home, he started reading the Book of Mormon. He could not put it down. He read by candlelight until 3 a.m. He did that for several nights, overwhelmed by what he read and what he felt. Alibert is now a member of the Church. Angelo Scarpula started his theological studies in his native Italy when he was 10. He eventually became a priest and served his Church with devotion. At a certain point, his faith started to waver, and he sought and received opportunities for further study. The more he studied, however, the more concerned he became. What he read and felt convinced him that there had been a general apostasy from the true doctrine taught by Jesus and the early apostles. Angelo searched for God's true religion in various faiths, but was left unsatisfied for many years. One day he encountered two members of the Church who were helping the missionaries find more people to teach. He felt drawn to them and joyfully listened to their message. Angelo willingly accepted a copy of the Book of Mormon. That evening he started reading the book. He felt overcome with joy. 
Through the Spirit, God gave Angelo an inner assurance that in the Book of Mormon, he would find the truth for which he had been seeking for many years. Sweet feelings flooded through him. What he read and what he learned from the missionaries confirmed his conclusion that there had been a general apostasy, but he also learned that God's true church had been restored to the earth. A short while later, Angelo was baptized into the church. When I first met him, he was the president of the Rimini, Italy branch of our church. What Nicholas Alibert and Angelo experienced with the Book of Mormon is reminiscent of Parley P. Pratt's experience. I opened the book with eagerness. I read all day, he wrote. Eating was a burden. I had no desire for food. Sleep was a burden when night came, for I preferred reading to sleep. As I read, the Spirit of the Lord was upon me, and I knew and comprehended that the book was true, as plainly and manifestly as a man comprehends and knows that he exists. My joy was full, as it were, as I rejoiced sufficiently to more than pay me for all the sorrows, sacrifices, and toils of my life. Some people have such powerful experience with the Book of Mormon the first time they open it. But for others, the witness of the truthfulness comes more gradually as they read and pray about it. That was my case. I first read the Book of Mormon as a teenage seminary student. This is the copy of the Book of Mormon I read. I cannot tell you the exact time or place that it happened, but somewhere during that reading I started sensing something. There was a warmth and a spirit that came every time I opened the book. The feeling grew as I continued my reading. That feeling continues to this day. Every time I open the Book of Mormon, it's like turning on a switch. The Spirit flows into my heart and soul. For yet others, a testimony of the Book of Mormon comes more slowly after much study and prayer. I have a friend who read the Book of Mormon searching to know if it was true. He applied the invitation in Moroni to ask God with a sincere heart, with real intent and faith in Christ, if the Book of Mormon is true. But he did not immediately get the promised spiritual answer. However, one day he was deep in thought driving down the road. The Spirit testified to him of the truth of the Book of Mormon. So happy and overwhelmed was he that he rolled down the car window and yelled to no one in particular and yet to all the world, it's true. Whether our testimony of the Book of Mormon comes the first time we open it or over a period of time, it will influence us all of our days if we continue to read it and apply its teachings. President Ezra Taft Benson taught, There is power in the book which will begin to flow into your lives the moment you begin a serious study of the Book of Mormon. You will find greater power to resist temptation. You will find the power to avoid deception. You will find the power to stay on the straight and narrow path. End of quote. I encourage everyone receiving this message including the Aaronic Priesthood Bearers convened in this meeting tonight to discover the power of the Book of Mormon. As President Thomas S. Monson has encouraged, quote, Read the Book of Mormon. Ponder its teachings. Ask Heavenly Father if it is true. End of quote. During that process, you will feel the Spirit of God in your lives. That spirit will be part of your testimony that the Book of Mormon is true, that Joseph Smith was a prophet of God, and that the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints is God's true church on the earth today. That testimony will help you resist temptation. It will prepare you for the great call of diligence to labor in the vineyards of the Lord. It will stand as a sure anchor when accusations or slanderous statements are used to challenge your faith and will be a rock-solid foundation when you are challenged with questions you cannot answer at least immediately. You will be able to discern truth from error, and you will feel the assurance of the Holy Ghost reconfirming your testimony over and over again as you continue to read the Book of Mormon throughout your lives. I encur also encourage the parents hearing or reading this message to make the Book of Mormon an important part of your home. I feel certain that if in our homes parents will read from the Book of Mormon prayerfully and regularly, both by themselves and with their children, 
the spirit of that great book will come to permeate our homes and all who dwell therein. The spirit of contention will depart. Parents will counsel their children in greater love and wisdom. Children will be more responsive and submissive to the counsel of their parents. Righteousness will increase, faith, hope, and charity. The pure love of Christ will abound in our homes and lives, bringing in their wake peace, joy, and happiness. End of quote. Now, many years after our children have left home and are raising their own families, we can see clearly the fulfillment of President Romney's promise. Our family is far from perfect, but we can testify of the power of the Book of Mormon and the blessings that reading it has brought and continues to bring into the lives of our home family. The greatest power of the Book of Mormon is in its impact in bringing us closer to Jesus Christ. It is a strong witness of Him and His redeeming mission. Through it, we come to understand the majesty and power of His Atonement. It teaches His doctrine clearly. And because of the magnificent chapters describing the visit of the risen Christ to the Nephites, we see and experience Him loving, blessing, and teaching those people and come to understand that He will do the same for us if we come to Him by living His gospel. Brethren, I testify of the power in the Book of Mormon. Whether reading it in English, Italian, or French, in print, or on an electronic device, I have found the same wonderful spirit flowing from its chapters and verses into my life. I testify of its ability to draw us closer to Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. A lot of people are wondering what the Book of Mormon is. Maybe they've heard of the musical. Maybe they thought it was funny. But then they're curious. What is it? And why should I care? To put it briefly, in about 60 seconds, here's the what and the why of the Book of Mormon. What is it? It's a book of scripture full of stories about God's love for all people and all places. Where's the setting? The Americas, but over 2,000 years ago. What's the plot? Basically, it's an epic tale of war and peace and good and evil that follows the lives of men and women who lived long ago, but who believed in and even predicted the coming of Jesus Christ. In fact, the entire story centers on him, his birth, teachings, and appearance in ancient America after his death and resurrection in Jerusalem. Remember when Jesus said, other sheep I have which are not of this fold? Well, as it turns out, his believers in the Americas were some of those other sheep. And the key part of the Book of Mormon chronicles his visit and ministry. That's why the Book of Mormon is called another testament of Jesus Christ. But that's really just the beginning of the story. By now, you probably have questions. So click a button below, and I'll tell you more. Chapter 32 Angels speak by the power of the Holy Ghost. Men must pray and gain knowledge for themselves from the Holy Ghost. About 559 through 545 B.C. And now, behold, my beloved brethren, I suppose that ye ponder somewhat in your hearts concerning that which ye should do after ye have entered in by the way. But, behold, why do ye ponder these things in your hearts? Do ye not remember that I said unto you that after ye had received the Holy Ghost, ye could speak with the tongue of angels? And now, how could ye speak with the tongue of angels, save it were by the Holy Ghost? Angels speak by the power of the Holy Ghost. Wherefore, they speak the words of Christ. Wherefore, I said unto you, Feast upon the words of Christ. For behold, the words of Christ will tell you all things what ye should do. Wherefore, now after I have spoken these words, if ye cannot understand them, it will be because ye ask not, neither do ye knock. Wherefore, ye are not brought into the light, but must perish in the dark. For behold, again I say unto you, that if ye will enter in by the way, and receive the Holy Ghost, it will show unto you all things what ye should do. Behold, this is the doctrine of Christ, and there will be no more doctrine given until after he shall manifest himself unto you in the flesh. And when he shall manifest himself unto you in the flesh, the things which he shall say unto you shall ye observe to do. And now I, Nephi, cannot say more. The Spirit stoppeth mine utterance, and I am left to mourn because of the unbelief and the wickedness and the ignorance and the stiff-neckedness of men. For they will not search knowledge, 
nor understand great knowledge when it is given unto them in plainness, even as plain as word can be. And now, my beloved brethren, I perceive that ye ponder still in your hearts, and it grieveth me that I must speak concerning this thing. For if ye would hearken unto the Spirit, which teacheth a man to pray, ye would know that ye must pray. For the evil spirit teacheth not a man to pray, but teacheth him that he must not pray. But behold, I say unto you, that ye must pray always, and not faint, that ye must not perform anything unto the Lord, save in the first place ye shall pray unto the Father in the name of Christ, that he will consecrate thy performance unto thee, that thy performance may be for the welfare of thy soul. Chapter 33 Nephi's words are true. They testify of Christ. Those who believe in Christ will believe Nephi's words, which will stand as a witness before the judgment bar. About 559 through 545 B.C. And now I, Nephi, cannot write all the things which were taught among my people. Neither am I mighty in writing like unto speaking. For when a man speaketh by the power of the Holy Ghost, the power of the Holy Ghost carrieth it unto the hearts of the children of men. But behold, there are many that harden their hearts against the Holy Spirit, that it hath no place in them. Wherefore, they cast many things away which are written, and esteem them as things of naught. But I, Nephi, have written what I have written, and I esteem it as of great worth, and especially unto my people. For I pray continually for them by day, and mine eyes water my pillow by night because of them. And I cry unto my God in faith, and I know that he will hear my cry. And I know that the Lord God will consecrate my prayers for the gain of my people and the words which I have written in weakness will be made strong unto them. For it persuadeth them to do good, it maketh known unto them of their fathers, and it speaketh of Jesus, and persuadeth them to believe in Him, and to endure to the end, which is life eternal. And it speaketh harshly against sin, according to the plainness of the truth. Wherefore, no man will be angry at the words which I have written, save he shall be of the spirit of the devil. I glory in plainness, I glory in truth, I glory in my Jesus, for he hath redeemed my soul from hell. I have charity for my people, and great faith in Christ that I shall meet many souls spotless at his judgment seat. I have charity for the Jew, I say Jew, because I mean them from whence I came. I also have charity for the Gentiles, but behold, for none of these can I hope except they shall be reconciled unto Christ, and enter into the narrow gate, and walk in the straight path which leads to life, and continue in the path until the end of the day of probation. And now, my beloved brethren, and also Jew, and all ye ends of the earth, hearken unto these words, and believe in Christ. And if ye believe not in these words, believe in Christ. And if ye shall believe in Christ, ye will believe in these words. For they are the words of Christ, and he hath given them unto me. And they teach all men that they should do good. And if they are not the words of Christ, judge ye. For Christ will show unto you, with power and great glory, that they are his words at the last day. And you and I shall stand face to face before his bar, and ye shall know that I have been commanded of him to write these things, notwithstanding my weakness. And I pray the Father, in the name of Christ, that many of us, if not all, may be saved in his kingdom at that great and last day. And now, my beloved brethren, all those who are of the house of Israel, and all ye ends of the earth, I speak unto you as the voice of one crying from the dust, Farewell until that great day shall come. And you that will not partake of the goodness of God, and respect the words of the Jews, and also my words, and the words which shall proceed forth out of the mouth of the Lamb of God, behold, I bid you an everlasting farewell, for these words shall condemn you at the last day. For what I seal on earth shall be brought against you at the judgment bar. For thus hath the Lord commanded me, and I must obey. Amen. Chapter 10
A testimony of the Book of Mormon comes by the power of the Holy Ghost. The gifts of the Spirit are dispensed to the faithful. Spiritual gifts always accompany faith. Moroni's words speak from the dust. Come unto Christ, be perfected in Him, and sanctify your souls. About A.D. 421. Now I, Moroni, write somewhat as seemeth me good, and I write unto my brethren the Lamanites, and I would that they should know that more than four hundred and twenty years have passed away since the sign was given of the coming of Christ. And I seal up these records after I have spoken a few words by way of exhortation unto you. Behold, I would exhort you that when ye shall read these things, if it be wisdom in God that ye should read them, that ye would remember how merciful the Lord hath been unto the children of men from the creation of Adam, even down until the time that ye shall receive these things, and ponder it in your hearts. And when ye shall receive these things, I would exhort you that ye would ask God, the Eternal Father, in the name of Christ, if these things are not true. And if ye shall ask with a sincere heart, with real intent, having faith in Christ, he will manifest the truth of it unto you by the power of the Holy Ghost. And by the power of the Holy Ghost ye may know the truth of all things. And whatsoever thing is good is just and true. Wherefore, nothing that is good denieth the Christ, but acknowledgeth that he is. And ye may know that he is by the power of the Holy Ghost. Wherefore, I would exhort you that ye deny not the power of God, for he worketh by power, according to the faith of the children of men, the same today and tomorrow and forever. And that all these gifts of which I have spoken, which are spiritual, never will be done away, even as long as the world shall stand, only according to the unbelief of the children of men. Wherefore, there must be faith. And if there must be faith, there must also be hope. And if there must be hope, there must also be charity. And except ye have charity, ye can in no wise be saved in the kingdom of God. Neither can ye be saved in the kingdom of God if ye have not faith. Neither can ye if ye have no hope. And if ye have no hope, ye must needs be in despair. And despair cometh because of iniquity. And Christ truly said unto our fathers, if ye have faith, ye can do all things which are expedient unto me. And now I speak unto all the ends of the earth, that if the day cometh that the power and gifts of God shall be done away among you, it shall be because of unbelief. And woe be unto the children of men, if this be the case. For there shall be none that doeth good among you, no, not one. For if there be one among you that doeth good, he shall work by the power and gifts of God. And woe unto them who shall do these things away and die, for they die in their sins, and they cannot be saved in the kingdom of God. And I speak it according to the words of Christ, and I lie not. And I exhort you to remember these things, for the time speedily cometh that ye shall know that I lie not, for ye shall see me at the bar of God. And the Lord God will say unto you, Did I not declare my words unto you, which were written by this man, like as one crying from the dead, yea, even as one speaking out of the dust? I declare these things unto the fulfilling of the prophecies, and behold, they shall proceed forth out of the mouth of the everlasting God, and his word shall hiss forth from generation to generation, and God shall show unto you that that which I have written is true. And again I would exhort you that ye would come unto Christ, and lay hold upon every good gift, and touch not the evil gift nor the unclean thing, and awake and arise from the dust, O Jerusalem, yea, and put on thy beautiful garments, O daughter of Zion, and strengthen thy stakes, and enlarge thy borders forever, that thou mayest no more be confounded, that the covenants of the Eternal Father, which he hath made unto thee, O house of Israel, may be fulfilled. Yea, come unto Christ, 
and be perfected in him, and deny yourselves of all ungodliness. And if ye shall deny yourselves of all ungodliness, and love God with all your might, mind, and strength, then is his grace sufficient for you, that by his grace ye may be perfect in Christ. And if by the grace of God ye are perfect in Christ, ye can in no wise deny the power of God. And again, if ye by the grace of God are perfect in Christ, and deny not his power, then are ye sanctified in Christ by the grace of God, through the shedding of the blood of Christ, which is in the covenant of the Father unto the remission of your sins, that ye become holy without spot. And now I bid unto all farewell. I soon go to rest in the paradise of God, until my spirit and body shall again reunite, and I am brought forth triumphant through the air, to meet you before the pleasing bar of the great Jehovah, the eternal judge of both quick and dead. Amen.